rise for a moment, a uh, silent prayer moment of reflection, please? <laughs> flag salute? Dang it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The, uh, the annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. City managers report on issues raised at prior meetings. <coughs> Special events, Leisha. Good evening. The first application before you is from Optimum Little Rio. And what they want to do is basically turn Bradley Park into a little Olympic park, mini Olympic park, with different Olympic activities for both adults and children. Um, it's a free event. They're not serving alcohol. They're going to work with the food trucks um, from Madison Marquette to keep it local. And that's basically the event. Yeah, no, I read that app, and I didn't, I don't, yeah. I don't understand. So, like, what's Okay, here's a, um, and they're not charging for anything? No. Here's an artist's conception, it might be easier to look at it. And they just want to do this because we're Asbury Park? No, they want to do it because Optimum is paying them a nice bonus to put on an event. Mm -hmm. And they chose Asbury Park because we're so popular. I mean, okay. So it would be great to have Thank Rio you. from Asbury. Thank you. Yeah, no. I was totally that's confused. That's fine. I just, are they like creating Olympic games that people are going to participate in? Yes. They're have a long, okay. But they're not digging up the park or anything. They're going to have a long jump. They're going to have a high jump. They're going to have a 40 yard dash. They're going to have a mini soccer field. They're going to have a mini something field next to it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Their application was a little vague. Right. It was a lot vague. Well, they told, came in and, and met with drawn. the. This is not going to be good for okay. They came in and presented it to the special events committee. Okay. And so we got a basic overview of what it is. Have they N done this in other cities? Um, I don't recall them saying so, no. Okay. This is a big PR firm out in New York City that's being hired by Optimum to put it on. And show you that the bake shop. <laughs> I know. When I saw that, I what thought, a, what I thought a, it was the Bradley Beach bake shop. No, it's like a big corporation out of the city. I never Googled it. You can Google. So yeah, on the back there, there's this. There's all the events. Get a lot of good publicity behind this. We all have to thank them. And they're doing it during the week on the 11th and 12th because that's when the Olympics starts. Right. There's Correct. Yeah. They wanted to do it on the weekend, but there's another event. Oh. What they're going to have. Oh. Uh. So tennis, soccer, whatever, long jump, slow jump. Okay. And so regular people are going to compete. Walk up, help yourself. It's open to the public. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like they're going to have Olympic people no. there. Right? No, okay. no. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next is National Night Out, which will be held in the parking lot of City Hall on August 2nd. Um, next is the End of Summer Summer Camp Fun Day, which will be held in Springwood Park on August the 4th, from noon to 4 p.m. Second Baptist Church would like to do uh, Sunday worship in Springwood Park on three dates, July 31st, August 27th, and 28th. They're doing Saturday and Sunday on the 27th and 28th? Yes. Back to School Carnival, um, hosted by Triumphant Life Church, August 18th through the 21st, and they would like to hold this again in Bradley Park. Next is the fourth Asbury Park Bell Buoy Row, which will be held on July 31st at Fifth Avenue Beach. And next is Indian Summer, which is sponsored again by Madison Marquette, which is camping on the beach. Basically, they did this event last year. This would be on uh, Saturday, September 24th. And they're asking for 50 tents? Is 
Um, and, and how many tents? Did oh, they have? 50 tents, yes. How many tents did they have last year? Last year, I believe it was a little less. Um, this year, they are anticipating more people. And how much space are they going to be taking up on the beach? That I'm not sure about. Can we get an idea before Wednesday? Or sure. Approximately? I, I do have a diagram, but I left it upstairs so I can email that to the um, mayor and council. Okay. okay. And then the one police officer patrolling the area. And this is way off season where if they took up, and they're not going to take up all of Six Island Beach, but if they did, it, it wouldn't disrupt anything else. That they're not taking up all. And lastly, we have three weddings. Oh, last year they were 40. This year, 40 tents. This year, there'll be 50 tents. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And lastly, we have three weddings on September 3rd, 10th, and 17th. Where's St. John's Island? Right by Sunset Park. Sunset Park is that little island right over the river. Where all the geese congregate. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Alicia, mm -hmm. I just want to let you know that if you need any help with either a night out or um, any of the other events that the city is running, the uh, back to school thing, I'd love to help. Oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Move on to review of agenda items for Wednesday night's meeting. Um, if it may please Mayor and Council, I'll go through some of the ones that might have some questions as it is a little warm in here, it smells sort of funky and I want to try to get out of here as soon as possible. Um, for those watching at home, the air conditioner broke and it might not be on for Wednesday either, so it's probably gonna be hot. Um, for individual resolutions, 2016-321 is accepting the municipal audit. That is a requirement. The auditor will be here on Wednesday to give a briefing of it. Resolution 323, which is declaring official intent to reimburse expenditures for project costs from the proceeds of the redevelopment area bonds, the RAB bonds. This is the special assessment that the city collects. This is um, pass through money that we collect to send to ISTAR and the professionals. Um, this is, ISTAR has asked for some of the money that they've fronted um, and we're in the pro process of reviewing all the paperwork. This gives us the avenue to actually pay the trustee and or the professionals. Um, resolution 325 is rejecting proposals for the CDBG activity. Um, we had put out to bid on two occasions the ADA compliant ramps for a CDBG project. The first proposal received no bids. The second received a bid that was too high, so we're rejecting both. And this will now allow us to um, solicit the proposals on an individual basis um, as per the local co public contracts law. There is a shared service, which is Resolution 328, with the city of Lock Arbor, with the village of Lock Arbor, for the tax assessor. Um, Lock Arbor is going to pay us thousand dollars a year to house their 148 property tax assessment files. Um, they've hired Eric Aguilar as their assessor, um, and this will pay us the ability for someone to call Eric. They only have 148 properties; it's not a heavy lift. Um, this is what they were spending annually in their budget for other expenses, O&E, so it's just coming to us now instead of them. Um, this also furthers, as governor's best practice, implementing shared services. And resolution 329, which is um, 147 Borden Avenue, block 1101, lot 30, will address an existing housing need in the city of Asbury Park for home financing. Uh, this resolution is at the request of Interfaith where we are supporting their application for county home funds. Again, it doesn't cost us anything. It's just a resolution in support of it. Um, resolutions 326 and 327 are the transportation center, so I'll let the city attorney handle those two. Yes, as you know, uh, we advertise for um, bidders for the leases of various spaces within the transportation center. As we have in the past, we put out to bid seven separate spaces within the transportation center, uh, one of which is considered to be a fixed space. That's where Topps Taxi has been located through the years. 
and then the other six are considered to be kiosk spaces. Um, the, there is a, di a diagram that was part of the bid package that shows where these areas would be located. One of the kiosk areas is the, the area where the concession uh, gentleman has been located through the years. And we, uh, we went out to bid and we advertised three times in the Esprit Park Press. There was a notice on the city's website. Um, unfortunately, we only had the same two who bid this time around as in the past years. Tops Taxi bid on the same space. No one else bid for that space besides Tops. Uh, their bid exceeded the minimum bid for the space. The minimum bid being $12,000 and the bid that they submitted was um, $12,600 for the year. And we only received uh, one bid for any of the other spaces and that was from the existing concessionaire uh, Theodore Johnson who runs the concession area and his bid likewise exceeded the minimum requirement. The minimum requirement um, for that space was $3,500 per year and his bid was $3,600 per year. And so I reviewed my uh, the contents of the bid packages for both of the bidders. They're conforming. They submitted all the necessary documentation. So have prepared resolutions authorizing the award of the bid to those two, for those two spaces to those two bidders for your consideration on uh, the agenda for Wednesday night. And okay. then, so the issue with the transportation center, um, because I heard about it from the mayor, was that we weren't charging them for electric, so we were going to increase the rent to make up the difference about the electric. So we well, increased the rent. When we put the minimum bids out, we did increase with that in mind. Okay. And wonder. So you'll never hear me again. Thank heaven. One question is, are we, it says it's for the first year's lease. Are we yes. going up in year's three lease two and year. three? It was in the bid specs that it goes up. Okay. Three and they're all right. paying all closing fees and everything to you? Yes, they're required to pay uh, professional fees, part of the bid specs. Okay. Good. Thank you. And we were hoping we would have more interest and that we'd have more bidders for the other spaces within the transportation center, but, you know. I know. You would think that if, I don't know. I'm not sure. that clock. Yeah, but tons of people take that train. I mean, on the weekends alone, I see them walking past the train. Well, now it's more traffic. Train at one time on that's Saturday. what I mean. So I it's feel like that's friendly. like. Well, weekends, the train stations only open four hours a day. Okay. Yeah, until oh. 2 o'clock. Right, so well, before can, that, it was open zero. If you award these two, there's still sp five other spaces. And if you want to still. I know, go back but I think out. we need to explain to people why it's marketable. Mm -hmm. Well, who set the hours? concession to be open. We did. And we're only asking to be open four hours on the weekend. 20, 20 hours a week is the minimum from the bid specifications that they're supposed to be open. We, we set the hours when the buildings open. So that sets the hours when they're open. And DPW is going to be we, there. We don't have the, we in the city on transitional aid, we don't have the manpower to staff it 24-7 to pay people in overtime to be there. So some guy can sell coffee. And so do we just give him the 20 hours and he determines what those 20 hours are? No, he's open Monday through Friday, as long as he wants to be, but we're, I'm saying from four Early mornings, mornings typically. But he's typically open in the early mornings. Right, he's uh, open from the, whatever the train, so the ticket taker gets there, say 4 a.m. to mm -hmm. like, so they shut it down at 4 p.m. But he can stay open. I mean, I was there today and he shut down at 2. So that was on him. Uh, and the train station was still open. And then all weekend, he's open four hours a day. Just this start this year, before that, it was zero. But he has the option to be open additional hours, sorry. Yes, it's a minimum of 20 hours a week. Okay. He can be open more than that. But and not if we don't have staff in the building. Yeah, it's part of the problem. Right, the he doesn't have his own it, key. Oh, well, he probably does. So when they move the so. concerts to the train station as they he do could be tonight, open tonight, he could be open tonight. Yeah. Okay. And he probably doesn't even know there's a concert going on there. That's a good thing to tell them. Yeah. Is there any other questions on agenda items? On any item or agenda items. Agenda. Yeah, just Cindy, just out of curiosity. It's three twenty four and you don't have to tell me now it's a liquor transfer. I just no Pascal and Sabine's. I just oh, did the same, same question. Going from a corporation oh. to a corporation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not the big haired guy. On um, um, 
resolution 2016 322, page 8, public library. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's the library funding, and we have no say in how they spend their money. Uh, Councilwoman Chapman asked the same question. I'll get a breakdown of it. Um, it's the $25,000 one you're looking for. This is a quarterly payment. We pay that. I don't know. I didn't have time to look into it. Um, Who's the vendor? Who's the vendor? It's part of the temporary budget because we, we fund their budget, and it, it's the same as like we have to give them money to operate because they're still working off the, I'm guessing, still working off the temporary budget. But I'll look into it. I just didn't have a chance today. I know you explained the RAB bonds, but just one question. Mm -hmm. it, it says that we're going to we're going to pay we're going to reimburse them out of the RAB bonds, but that we're not obligated to do so. We're not obligated. We're not obligated to do so if the paperwork's not in order um, from both sides of the aisle. And right now, the first submission they submitted to us, we rejected. So we're not obligated to do anything until it meets the standards of the engineer. We want to make sure that we're paying, you know, if they paid road A, B, and C, they're not putting in for filing cabinet one, two, three. regarding the Fifth Avenue Pavilion Bay and Shelter renovations, which is uh, scheduled for a resolution on uh, Wednesday. Yes, as you know, last Monday, um, Ms. Turner gave a presentation, National Weather Service alert. It's going to rain. That I got. Uh, okay, so since we're talking about the Fifth Avenue Banjo, and since Carrie's here, and I know the Historical Society is going to reach out to you, do you have any problem with the name of this Arthur Pryor Banjo? I don't think there's one, but I have to also uh, ask people about the history of the library. Yeah, we got to hand deliver at the same yeah, time. Yeah. Can we get an answer by Wednesday before we vote on it? We may not vote on it. You know, how about you do? But uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's a outlandish request. I mean, well, it would be nice if we could find the bronze plaque that somebody yeah. stole. I think it was just a small plaque that was on his <laughs> well, It was good size. It was uh, like this by this. Yeah, with the, the history. Right. No, no, that's all there. That's all they're asking, just to keep the name. Yeah. That's all they're asking, keep the name. They're not saying any statues or anything. 
Okay, thank you. So the one thing that um, Michelle brings up is that um, the, the portion, and I don't know if this is in this thing here or it's in, you know, there's eventually going to be a redeveloper's agreement, right? We already have one. This is the redeveloper's agreement. So the one thing that Michelle brings up, which I think is legitimate, is to ju is to discuss the, the public space similar to what we do with Convention Hall, right? Mm -hmm. That Madison gives us, I'm going to say 20 days, I don't know, I don't know how many actual days, um, for the city to have public events there. So is that still on, did we resolve that issue or is that on for discussion? <coughs> or is that, well, that's am I crazy? In the, in the resolution mm -hmm. as one of the conditions. Right. That the applicant and the city enter into an agreement that sets parameters with regard to the uh, limited public rental of the space. Okay, so I guess th the question that I'm having is these recommendations, which you know, I think most aren't dimly lit, externally lit. Like I don't think those are going to be make or breakers. Um, so, do we incorporate these recommend? I, I just don't know how it works. Do we incorporate these recommendations in, you know, including you know the, the part about public, you know, limited public dates or however we do it with convention hall, or is there a better way to do it? But we should we should talk about that before we vote on it, right? I don't think Michelle brought it up. I think I brought it up, and now I wish I hadn't brought it up because to me it shouldn't be a deal breaker. It was a suggestion if we can do it. I mean, when the well, if we do it with Convention Hall, why can't we? I mean, you'll because that was a big that was again. a big master plan with the entire redevelopment agreement and everything, where this is just a privately owned venue that had previously been done public, and we're talking about restoring it and reusing it. When you use words like restore and reuse. see how this would be a make or breaker if, if, if you give us a certain number of public dates. Yeah, what's, his, what's the number? I mean, it, it, what do we have for Convention Hall? More than we use. Not that that's a good answer. I'm going to say 20, 21, something like that. But I mean, the difference there, I'm going to, and I, I could, once I suggested it, I was like, the difference there is like, this is going to be, Convention Hall is Convention Hall. Convention Hall is open for you to rent, me to rent, a uh, roller derby to rent, somebody else to rent. This is going to be a privately run restaurant that's going to be booking their own functions. And then we're going to tell them, oh, guess what? Cancel your wedding because we want to have the city. I mean, no. So the right, right. How, well, how do you, how or, do you, or you, you put in the lease agreement. The, the city gets 15 days. We will give you whatever amount of notice you want us to give you for those 15 days. A year. Okay. A year. And the whoever's going to rent this space knows that going. I mean, it's 15 days. What If all 15 are in February, where in theory there aren't tons of people in Esbury Park, I can't imagine a person's going to have a problem. If we say we want 15 days in July, I, of course, see you having a problem renting it. I can't imagine us being in the band show in February if it's outdoors. No. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, so at the most I would go is like once a month in season. So using, for example, the band, the band that plays on Thursday nights. The, the Asbury Park concert band that yeah, plays that's the on the boardwalk. boardwalk. So if we move said them. once a month, can you move them up to that space? The redevelopers agreement from 2010. Yes. Okay. So in 2010, when that um, agreement 
came before the council if there was public input, substantial public input on that? Probably not. It was adopted publicly and you know, we can look back on the record to see if anyone spoke during the open public comment period, but uh, it was adopted at some point in time uh, in public. Okay. I and agree, Carrie, I agree about the 2010. If this was a public space that was used for public purposes for, I don't know, 50 years, it was certainly used well before I got here in 2000, um, why wouldn't we want to stay with the spirit of that and negotiate a couple of days that this is used by either whatever, the Asbury Park band that's on the boardwalk, the high school, I don't know. I, I don't know why we wouldn't try, I guess is my point. Uh, whether it's a make or breaker, I don't know. I just don't know why we wouldn't try. I don't know to what degree Michelle um, reviewed her proposed resolution with Carl before drafting it. It could very well be that she did include Carl in, in the mix when she was putting this together. So I do think it would be advantageous to run this all by him since his firm was involved with the uh, negotiation of that 2010 agreement. Um, and then obviously it would be something that he'll be addressing at the meeting on Wednesday that we have between now and Wednesday to clarify. I'm just looking at the zoning considerations <coughs> where it says, in addition, the plan also states that the historic structure should be restored and reused. And I think in the spirit of restoration and reusing and preservation, I would like to see some city day people. And this isn't, we're not, it, all I'm saying is we're not, I'm, I'm not, I just think we should have a discussion about it and see if we can get somewhere with it for some public use a couple of days out of the year. That's it. I'm not looking to scare away the people that you want to rent this space. But, but if and when, God forbid, you're ever gone and you and I make that agreement, or I'm gone. Maybe there's another conversation then that could be had. So maybe, Michael, you could follow up and let us know tomorrow so we're not at down to the wire Wednesday trying to vote on something that we've all been trying to get off the ground for years. And, and I also think that there can be language inserted into the resolution, you know, stating that if it's in violation of the agreement, if we can't come to some sort of aspect of it. From listening to everyone now, I don't think anyone wants the project to stop. It's just clarification of this, where the resolution can say, in consideration of city dates, it is under review whether it is permissible or not to have city dates as per the redevelopers agreement. I don't want to vote on this until we resolve that issue. Okay. I didn't know, it, well, I'll be honest, I didn't know it wasn't resolved. I just assumed it was resolved, so I apologize for that. That, that, that bad is on me. discussion regarding the Fifth Avenue Pavilion? Any other matters by City Council? Do you know the recommendations that Michelle's made? So, okay. Uh, well, I didn't read them either. Well, I mean, <laughs> I honestly think 90% of them you're, it, 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 it's you fine, are not right? going to have a problem with, but if we, if we vote to incorporate these recommendations, they should know, right? They should, but in her memo, and it was dated July 20th, she has certain parties CC'd, and one was Mad Madison Asbury Retail. Now, I don't know when she got this and who she sent it to at Madison Asbury Retail, but obviously Carrie wasn't provided with a copy of it. So uh, I know typically when, when Don Samet used to do these memos and when Michelle did the same, you know, when she came on board, um, she provides a copy of the review memo to the party who submitted the request before the mayor and council. So, so, so then maybe we could get Carrie a copy like Absolutely. tonight? because they're listed as a CC right here on the memo. So. And 
and then Michael, you'll email all of us and just get a, give us a status update tomorrow. Any other matters by City Council? I just like to let everyone know that the concert on usually scheduled tonight for Springwood has been moved to the Transportation Center if anyone's interested in going. And then, Michael, the only question I had, and I think you cleared it, actually you cleared it up on the phone today, so I don't think you need to ask it. And I just want to announce that the next expungement session is going to be August 5th at 7 p.m. at St. Stephen's AME Church in the corner of Springwood and Prospect. And they've been going really well. So far, we already expunged people. I'm sorry, go ahead. So, no, so anybody that would be benefit, please come out. Carrie definitely needs a copy of this because it says the applicant agreed to something that they didn't agree to. matters by city council I think I'm gonna wait till Wednesday but <coughs> Yvonne happy belated birthday Saturday <laughs> and I got your card is in the mail <laughs> thank you happy birthday happy birthday thank you thank you it was a great day no more matters we'll move on to matters by city council do I by the city manager. Do you have comments? Yeah, a uh, couple. Last meeting, we were looking into the money owed by the court, and somebody was going to reach out to AOC to see if we have to go through the whole process again or if we can. I don't have an answer on that yet, but I will for one. Short circuit. And the second thing, we were talking about DOT not being receptive to us paving Steiner Place, or where does that stand? We call each other every day, it seems, and just keep missing each other. So we haven't had a conversation yet. Okay. Um, concerning Steiner Place and the road program, um, we had bid opening last Tuesday. We can do everything in the road program. The engineer's updating the bidder's response list so I can provide it to everyone. Um, we'll be able to do everything. It was A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then three um, alternates. <coughs> it's just right now with the Transportation Trust Fund on hold and eight hundred thousand dollars of city of transportation trust fund money we can't recommend an award until that gets settled so the prices came in lower than anticipated um asphalt prices have dropped it seems around the state so that's a good thing we just need transportation trust fund fixed and we'll be able to pave everything and we should have a list for everything on wednesday michael i had a question about the roads too when we're repaving um fourth and doing infrastructure repairs to sunset is it possible to bury utility lines during that process no um, the utilities don't like bearing bearing lines because when there's a break it's harder to find because they don't obviously can't see underground um, there's also concern about water infiltration so the utilities are really against doing it it's just it's much easier to keep the existing um, I've asked in other places we've asked here it's just not feasible in this sort of environment where if something breaks it could be anywhere along a roadway what do other towns do that have all their lines buried? Those have been buried years ago. The utilities won't do it anymore okay. uh, for that reason. Especially after Sandy, they, you can't find it. So okay. it's exactly. it's easier to string up in a, you know, a, a quick fix. And I figured it would be easier to not have those wires come down if they were buried. They can run a, a bypass. But if it's underground, then they're, they're really just looking for everything. And if you've ever seen someone break a fiber optic line underground and there's placing 3,000 fiber lines for four days, 24 hours a day, you see why the utilities don't want to do that. Okay. And like the paving goes from Ridge Avenue to Pine Street or Ridge, Ridge to or Fourth Avenue to the beach? I don't remember off the top of my head. That's why I asked the engineer to have the whole thing on the sheet. And you'll have that for Wednesday. Right.
other matters? Okay. Matters by city manager. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, there's three quick things. Transportation planner and salary ordinance are combined. Um, one of the things in discussions with the parking committee is we've had two shots at the parking consultant. Um, and the prices have been higher than we anticipated or the work would leave some gaps in it. Um, so talking with the parking committee and the city planner, we think that a better option would be to hire an internal transportation planner. Um, it would cost a little less with the first part of it concentrating on parking, managing the parking, uh, managing the consultants, um, especially taking some of the work off everyone who's tried to deal with ITS um, and have them manage it. Um, the city planner, Michelle, has seen this in Hoboken where at first it started with transportation because Hoboken had a parking crunch, but then it also extends to other aspects of transportation, intermodal transportation, pedestrian, bike-oriented transportation. Um, the, f sal the salary and ex office staff would be paid out of the um, parking utility because it's parking related. So there is no current fund taxation issue. It's, we were gonna pay the consultant for um, parking out of the parking utility. This would pay it out of the same thing. Um, so we're recommending, we're gonna start the process of trying to hire the transportation planner, but we also need to amend the salary ordinance for a range. Um, we anticipate the position being 50 to $60,000. Um, you still need to be a certified planner um, and see what we get, because obviously we have issues with, you know, planning, uh, with planning and the, pl the parking is planning. Is there any questions on that? And the state has signed off on this. Um, we've reviewed it with George, and he said that makes sense if the the RPs aren't giving you what you want. This will probably this will make a better long term solution if we can find someone. And then also under E three is the animal house ordinance. Um, on your for intro, first reading introduction is the animal house ordinance from Belmar with some few tweaks to fit a city instead of um, a borough form of government. What this would be is if that there is a summer rental property that causes havoc, for lack of a better word, um, some disturbances. There is a process where they go through, they get notification two times by anyone, whether it's the police or code enforcement um, or the construction department, it's whoever the city manager um, recommends. From there, they go to a hearing, and then they can have a bond in place where if they continue to cause problems, we take their money, and we can pull COs. So this is based upon the Belmar Ordinance, which is based upon state law, tweaks for our form of government. Is there anything I missed, Fred? Uh, no. It, it, the state law allows us to adopt an ordinance like this, and um, Belmar has done that, and it's been called the Animal House Ordinance at Belmar, and we're following suit and implementing the provisions that the state statutes allow us to put in place. And one of the reasons we're putting this in place, obviously, for the public is that, you know, some of these summer COs were getting um, noise complaints out of them, and we're trying to get, um, a, a, not only are we trying to get a better handle of the summer COs and the Airbnbs and everything that's going on in Asbury, but specifically, we're trying to curb the problem sooner rather than later with noises at these houses of summer COs. And if I could just indicate that this ordinance is actually more broad than just summer rentals. This is for all rentals. Okay. And that is what the state statutes provide for. Originally, they were drafted just for summer rentals, but the, the state legislation was amended to remove the seasonal summer part, and it, it's applicable to all rentals, seasonal or otherwise. Any other matters? Matters by the city manager? No. Matters by the city attorney? I have no matters at this time. Have a motion to open the meeting to the public. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order and while appropriate warning may terminate further comments. Each speaker, please state your name and address for the record. So you have three minutes to speak.
Good evening, Mayor, Council, Pam Lamberton, 321 Sunset. Um, I spoke to you previously about some uh, petitions that were presented to the city and rejected, and I asked that you get copies of them and take a look at what that Southwest Quadrant is trying to tell you. Um, I d don't know if any of you had a chance to pull any of those petitions or look at them yet. Um, I just pulled one this morning just to tell you about it. It's asking for uh, the city to raise the min minimum wage for uh, part-time employees in the city to be, depending upon the hours worked, either up to 11 something an hour or $15 an hour. I'm not asking, I'm not here asking you to do that. I'm ask, asking you to read the petition, read their justification, and understand what it is they're trying to tell you. There are people in that quadrant who do not make a living wage, who are in dire need of assistance, and they have jobs, and they have jobs with the city, and maybe if you can raise their, their minimum salary, it's gonna help the whole city, but especially that population. I don't even know if it's possible to do this. I don't, that's, you know, you need somebody to look into it, but I want you to understand that this is an issue that they're bringing to your attention by way of the petition method. Thank you. The petitions were looked into as far as, uh, were they legal and were there deficiencies in, in the petitions? They were denied because there were deficiencies. It's that simple. It's not because I'm Caucasian, they're African American. I, I totally resent that implication, I, I do. Uh, it's not because I live on 4th Avenue and they live on 8th Avenue. It was like you submitted a deficient petition and we cannot put something on a ballot that is totally illegal. And it, it will play itself out in court and you'll probably get an uh, answer on Wednesday that maybe they've dropped their lawsuits because they realize they were illegal, or maybe they'll resubmit them the right way. But we just do not like say that we're going to turn this down because it came from Pan, or it came from John, it came from Amy, it came from everybody. That would be totally irresponsible. I mean, it was a decision made in conjunction with the city administration, the city clerk, and the city attorney, and to imply that like, it was done maliciously or like you know against somebody because of color of skin is just that just totally is unacceptable to me. I know we had, we could agree to disagree, but that was not the case, Pam. So thank you. Okay. Wednesday, you have three minutes. I think it's more, if I'm understanding Pam correctly, it's more about the spirit of the petition than the actual petition. Make what you will of that, but that's what I mean. That's what I hear you saying. But I I, I, I know what Pam said at the last meeting. I know what she implied, and I watched it again on APTV, and I was more upset the second time when I watched it. You know. Because sometimes things happen here quick and everything. And again, I appreciate your concerns, but I, I just think on this one you, you were a little bit off base. And again, that's my opinion. So, but I thank you, Rita. Oh, hi. Uh, you said fifty tents on the boardwalk. Beach, do they Rita, pay? The, the do beach. they pay the same amount of money? Like if somebody wants to. Uh, go on to the beach like six hundred dollars and then two fifty for the application and insurance. Does that work the same way for fifty tents on the beach? That's one question. The other question is in those bids for the transportation center, do they include electricity? Well I don't know if they have gas, but I know they have electric in the bids. Yeah? No. When All you're right. Done, Rita. All right, and uh, the third thing I wanted to talk about was that I attended a meeting Friday at four o'clock in this room. I thought it was just awful what happened here that night. There was no, nobody knew about the meeting. I heard it through word of mouth. There was four people here. It was never advertised. I mean, I don't know if you know that, I didn't see one council member here or the city manager or anybody with authority in this room Friday at 4 o'clock uh, in the middle of the summer. How would you call a meeting at that time is what I want to know. 
I called the coaster to find out why it wasn't in the coaster, and she said it came in Wednesday at 2.30. Now, you, you know the paper comes out on Thursday. I mean, if they're going to have a meeting, shouldn't it be more well-planned, especially if they're going to give out money? Then the last thing about the meeting was that all the funds from the um, community development were going to go to nonprofits. And then they said that the city manager approved of that. I don't know how that happened, but I'd like an explanation. And that's it. Let me take the easy one. Did you know about the meeting? I didn't even know. I bet the council didn't even know. Yes, I knew about the meeting. I didn't know about the meeting, so I didn't know about the meeting. I mean, it's ridiculous. Four o'clock on a Friday night, and most employees now come out through the store because we were here at four o'clock and we saw what happened. Why don't they go out the front door? If they're gonna leave early, they're gonna leave early, but they should go out the front door and not sneak around and come out here. And I saw quite a few of them leaving. They didn't know we were in here, I guess. But, I mean, like, how do you call a meeting at four o'clock on a Friday in the middle of the summer? Especially a meeting is as important as that. It's about dollars. So, okay. Okay, like I say, I'll, I'll take the easy ones and leave the last one to Michael. All right. As far as the transportation center, no, they're not hooked up to individual meters. That's why we raised the rent, just to finally figure that out. Uh, the special events, yes, they pay the fee. They pay the application fee and they pay the beach rental fee. And then CDBG, Michael. As was explained to you during the CDBG meeting on Friday, it was a technical assistance meeting to help applicants fill out the application. It was submitted to the paper on Tuesday for Thursday. The paper did not get it in. Um, as part of the process, the schedule actually had built-in dates in case something like this happened. It was, it was advertised on the website, but the legal aspect of it is it has to be in the newspaper. But since um, we did it smartly and we built in some error dates in case there was issues like this. It's going to be re-advertised in the paper. It's going to be here again. It is just a technical assistance meeting on how to fill out the application, what is eligible and what is not eligible. I think last year Cassandra said there was no one showed up. This year we had four people show up. So that was explained to you during the meeting because Cassandra told me that this is what happened. Um, it's going to be re-advertised. It is going to be reposted. It's just a technical assistance meeting on what is CDBG, CDBG eligible and what is not CDBG eligible. It's, there's no action taken. There's no spending of money. It's a technical assistance meeting on how to fill out an application along with the RCA program. That's all it is. There's no money being spent. It's just a public meeting on how to improve your application process, which is required by law. There is a deficiency. We correct it, and we're moving on. Well, what about the part that it's only going to nonprofits? There wasn't one nonprofit in the audience. That's incorrect. That's incorrect? Correct. The, app the application process is open. Um, we're trying to move away from public service applications to do more construction projects so that we can spend money in a timely fashion. Um, when you read the audit, you'll see that CDBG is a timeliness issue. So we have to spend money faster, which is construction projects. You need to be shovel ready well, <clears throat> excuse me, the nonprofit funds take a little bit longer to draw down. So yes, we can still do public service, which is the, the nonprofit um, helping people, but it's going to be at a lower percentage, if at all, as we need to spend the money faster because we haven't been spending it fast enough. Mm -hmm. So the people, so the applicants who have activities already pending have already said, spend your money or we need to take it back because we have to spend it or else HUD takes it away. I'd suggest that you don't have it at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon in the summer. Have it at a more reasonable time. And not on a Friday. And the Friday does not have to end in Wednesday. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrannell. Happy birthday to two of you that had a birthday last this week. Um, what I wanted to say is, with the Arthur, Arthur Pryor Pavilion, 
I thought that was a good idea that you were asking for 20 days um, to use it, but I don't think you should bid against yourself. 20 days was a good number, not 15, not 12, so uh, stick with the 20. The other thing is, I wouldn't have given them permission to do the renovation on, Arthur Pavil on the Fifth Avenue Pavilion unless Seventh Avenue Pavilion would had plans before you that that was gonna be renovated because the money that they're gonna spend to raise the roof on the Fifth Avenue Pavilion, they may be able to turn around the Seventh Avenue Pavilion and get that going because you gave them the food core because they didn't have time or money to work on the Seventh Avenue Pavilion. And if you want the North End to develop, you need Seventh Avenue to come online and that should be part of the requirement. When are we gonna see that? You've been really kind and I don't know how public space from the bandstand turned into private space, and we're not even sure if it's gonna be a restaurant all the time, it may be other space. It should be one or the other. You got too many variables working for the developer. You're there to protect the taxpayer or the city resident, but you know that already. The other thing is, um, there's an old saying, you must have a plan, or you definitely have a plan for failure. I like to know when you guys could tell us what the plans are for this year. So, and I think a good way to get the plans for this year is to know what the, each department's doing so you can plan, and that way the city manager can fulfill his contract and tell you what his plans are. You could give him his goals so he can succeed. So we're not complaining he didn't do a good job. We wanna say he, he reached all our goals, he's gotta get the pay raise that we agreed on. But you guys need a plan on how we're gonna reach next year's budget to reduce it or whatever you guys are gonna do so we don't have a tax increase. The other thing is um, Animal House and people renting their places by the week. I think the neighbors of the places that are being rented have a right to know who's coming and going out of the property. And I know for a fact when neighbors have Airbnb, there's always extra cars on the block. I don't think the neighborhood, if there's limited parking, should have to give up parking spots because someone rented their back house or their apartment on a weekly basis and four cars show up. Um, and then Rita did tell me about the people leaving the council chambers on Friday. I don't know if that was a legal exit for employees to leave. I thought they all should go out by the time clock. So could you guys tell me what your plan is for the budget for next year? So we have a, an idea of how we're proceeding? I can take the WRA one. We're, we're trying to figure out this year's budget. The, the executive order 209, the governor froze $1.2 million of our transitional aid. And we've got no response from Trenton except uh, our monitor came down right away and told us they're getting the DLGS, Division of Local Government Services, is getting no response from the governor's office either. So uh, we're in a quandary with this year's budget. So uh, we are looking ahead. And I told you the last meeting, as soon as we got that, we, Michael put out an email to all department heads to freeze all spending, unnecessary spending. You gotta buy gas, you gotta buy, you know, supplies, paper, whatever. But uh, so, so we're on top of that and we're already looking at next year's budget also if we do lose the entire transitional aid, well, we're off to state aid. And then if we do like pull a rabbit out of the hat, we could maybe make taxes stable, decent next year. But as long as we're on state aid, you know there's gonna be a uh, tax increase. There has to be, that's you know the governor's edit. Uh, so we, we are on top of the budget, uh, more this year than next year's, but it's listen all it's my business July. plan if, 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 if it's July if we're worried right now about the beach bathing we're out of game in July we should be starting to worry about like leaf pickup and uh, plowing the streets and have a game plan for that so we are planning like six months to a year ahead so yes it's, it's being looked at you what WRA? Yeah, well, I mean, Jerry, so, right, there's two agreements that govern the what? waterfront. There's two agreements that govern the waterfront, essentially, okay? Um, the 2002 Waterfront Redevelopment Agreement, and then there's a, a, a redevelopers agreement with Madison, right? So we went, so th we went through them, and in 2013, we held Madison in default on what, on Fifth Ave Pavilion. So um, 
sh you know, are we going to examine the Sunset Ave Pavilion? Absolutely. But the, the default we're moving forward is because we held them in default in 2014, as soon as, you know, like I think a few weeks after our swearing in. And so that's why the focus is on the Fifth Ave Pavilion. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. to close public? Move it. Second. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn? Move it.